Mike, I got to talk to you about the Sixers trade. This sort of came very quickly upon everybody. It heard rumors here and there, but Andrew Bynum, a big mm -hmm. seven footer from the Los Angeles Lakers, goes to the Sixers in a blockbuster trade. One of the right. big components being Andre Iguodala goes to Denver. What I originally heard was he actually went to Orlando, but Orlando didn't really want him. <laughs> they didn't want that contract. They wanted younger player. And then they had to find another, another, a fourth team, which was Denver. So it was the Lakers, Orlando, and Denver in this trade. So it was a three team trade, if I get it correct here. Yeah. So anyhow. Well, four? the Lakers. It's four teams. Yeah, four the teams. Lakers are in there, too. You have four yeah. teams, yeah. Uh, anyhow, what do you think of this trade? I, 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 think it's, I think it's great from the Sixers' standpoint because, because you have to have great players in the NBA. You have to have aircraft carrier-type players, and he has a chance to be that. Now, he brings some negative – there's no question that he brings some negative baggage – but uh, a, a guy that you can throw it into in low post 20 times a game and who can score and who can get 12 rebounds a game. I think he had 30 rebounds in a game last year against uh, the San Antonio Spurs. And uh, kind of a big game for the Lakers at the time. And, um, you, you know, I, I, he, he's a guy who I, I, I have not been a fan of because I think he sulks when he doesn't get the ball. I, I've yeah. seen him do some really – remember the time he drilled the guy from the Mavericks oh. when they were about to on their way out Hurry of the playoffs? Up, yeah. On and on. So, but but – the key number with him is 24, which is how old he is. And I, I, he's not a, as Marcus Hayes in the Philadelphia Daily News said the other day, very wisely, I think, he's not a man yet. If he becomes a man in the, and the Sixers have him, he's, he's in a Sixer uniform when that happens. That's a very positive thing. Yeah, no question. Yeah, he won't be 25 until October. You know, he, could, he didn't get along with Phil Jackson, so I don't know how he's going to get along with Doug Collins. I, was, <laughs> <laughs> I do think it was the right move. He had to take this chance. When people said to me, what do you think of this? I said, I'm not thrilled because of the immaturity, because there's been mm -hmm. some injuries, knees, but I think, you know, one of them was a fluky thing, somebody rolled into him. But I, I really think that he's going to play well this year. It's the contract year. I'm worried about after this year, which I think he'll sign a five-year deal. I think he'll do it with the Sixers, a five-year deal for the maximum hundred and some million dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, I worry in the future, I just don't know if he's ever going to grow up. And they, they compare him to when the Sixers got Moses Malone. Moses was out of high school also, but Moses came in here already an MVP, already had that, that hard hat workman mentality. Moses was, Moses was the best player in the world in about 1980, 1981, yeah. and they got him in 83. I mean, this guy's not the best player in the world. I mean, that's not much of a comparison. But, but, but the workman, I, I think, I'm not sure if he's a hard worker like right. Moses was, too, let alone the best player in the world. And mm -hmm. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who was his mentor, that's why he's wearing the number 33, said that when I first got him, he was a hard worker, he wanted to learn, but somewhere along the line, he started taking days off and thought he had learned enough. And I'm concerned, I think they should bring in Moses Malone to work with him again, <laughs> work with him now, because he's worked with kids before, Samuel Downbear being one of them. But I'm concerned that he's going to be taking some days off. Now, last year at this time, Sixers had a chance to trade Eagle Dalla for Monte Ellis. It was around the draft of last year. Mm -hmm. Now, if you compare that, that making a trade for Monte Ellis, a very good scoring guard, or getting a big man in Bonham, which would you do? Oh, there's no... Comparison. I would take Bynum. Take there's, Bynum. No, there's no, there's no question about that. I, I would I, too. Uh, it's, so, so you know, they, they're they're going to have that. And another thing about this that is very positive, I think, if you're a Sixers fan, is the, this new ownership group in its second year, uh, after a year in which they could have said. Hey, we got to the second round of the playoffs and took the Celtics to Game gonna, Seven. I was afraid they were going to do know, that. Yeah. And, and thinking that they, well, we're doing great realizing that the team was not good enough, not nearly good enough, and had big holes, yep. and let's address these holes. And I, I think they certainly have done about as much as you could reasonably expect them to do to do that. So that's a very positive sign. I think this came up quickly for them as well because I, th I think they wish they had the $19 million back they spent for Spencer Hawes and Kwame Brown and they're on two-year deals because maybe they could have done something different with a better two-guard. Good God. Yeah, he can play some defense. He's going to come off your bench. But Spencer Hoss is going to play the power forward. Good passer. I'm curious to see how that works. Let's not forget the other guy involved in this trade, which is Jason Richardson. This guy can shoot. And I very think he's talented. going to wind up being your starting shooting guard. He's a very talented player. And he's, I, I don't know if he's going to start because you got the, you know, you got Turner and Holiday. But, but, uh, but I, I do think he, he could. They, they, they couldn't score enough last year. It was so hard for them to yeah. score last yeah. year. Now they, th that should not be anywhere near as big a problem. I mean, they, they right. have addressed that in a big way. They addressed size. They addressed uh, shooting. Richardson is one of them. Nick Young another. Darrell Wright, uh, Darrell Wright being a third guy that can shoot. 
Phenomenal player for Golden State. Got held back last year under Mark Jackson's system. I think Evan Turner should come off the bench because he could be your point forward, but we'll see what they do. Yeah, we'll see. I just like all the options. The other thing is sometimes players tune out Doug Collins after about three years. He's in his third year coming up. He's got eight new players to work with, Mike. It's just starting over That's new. That's a good point. Yeah. It should be really fun Churn to watch a little this bit. Year. Yeah. yeah, absolutely.